Hey, guys. This video is dedicated to the channel subscribers who have always been there for me. I would also like to welcome new members. Please pay attention to what I am saying because I will give you as much scientific information as a university unit. Even in my own school, they don't tell the students. This is a high-grade mineral stone. It sounds normal on the surface, but I have to say it's one of the best gold mines I've ever seen. Most mining students mistake this mineral for oxidized iron ore. So let me answer one question. Iron ore does not oxidize in this way, and this mineral is not iron ore. This mineral has been affected by sulfur for thousands of years, but over time sulfur has been removed in the form of oxide and what remains is gold sulfate along with a few other valuable elements that I will explain below. On the stone there are yellow and dark purple parts. It may look black on the surface, but if you look at it with a magnifying glass, you'll notice that. There is no iron in this mineral, but there is a small amount of copper. Minerals like this look like ant nests and look scaly inside. This was due to the release of sulfur gas. But that's not the only thing. In the depths of this mine, the possibility of mercury is very high because on the surface of this rock there are signs of mercury presence. Beautiful green colors are on the surface of mercury sulfate stone. So be careful with the colors from now on. Blue colors are platinum sulfate. Each sulfate has its own unique color, but sometimes it is impossible to distinguish color. Because by combining a few sulfates together, a beautiful new color is created and forms a wide range of colors, and that's the magic of chemistry and physics, and I don't want to get into that right now. Keep in mind that every element has a specific frequency response, and today smart detectors are being developed that can detect elements by frequency response type. Let's not get out of the main discussion. Let's look at the magnifying glass to show you the beautiful range of colors. Each color represents an element. Remember that every element has sulfate, nitrate and chloride. Therefore, the possibility of radioactive row elements is always present and try to maintain safety. If you see a part of a stone emitting light in sulfate state, you should be careful. Because by looking at that stone, the possibility of eye pain and eye cancer and brain tumor formation is raised. I didn't say that to be afraid, I just wanted to say that health is more important than gold. Friends, pay attention to these areas that are seen with the magnifying glass. The purple parts are pure gold sulfate and the metallic yellow parts are gold itself. I'm not going to check out the other colors, but if you like to write in comments to make separate videos for other colors. Now by looking at the purple areas, it's easy to calculate how much Now to the important question. How do we process this type of mine? Please note that each mine has its own method of purification and cannot be extracted by one method. The method of mining is quite different from the method of electronic waste extraction. Solution number one. We are going to grind this mine with 200 mesh. 100 grams of powder of this mineral is mixed with 300 grams of sodium hydroxide and add 500 cc water to it and put in a warm environment. After three days we wash the soil to remove sodium hydroxide. There will be gold metal particles at the bottom of the container. Note that this method does not recycle gold sulfate, only metal particles of gold will be found. And note that in this method, if you use acids, both gold sulfate and gold particles dissolve in acid and it will be difficult to recycle. Solution number 2. 1. Grind this mineral with 200 mesh. 2. Add to 500 cc distilled water 300 cc sulfuric acid. 3. Add 300 grams of powdered stone to the solution. 4. Place the Pyrex glass at 35 degrees. After 6 hours all gold sulfate is dissolved in acidic solution. 5. Filter the solution. I recommend you filter twice. 6. Add some clean and healthy iron nails to the filtered solution and put the glass at 45 degrees Celsius again. The iron nail switches with gold sulfate and turns it into gold powder. 8. Finally, dry the obtained powder and melt with borax and cedar gold. 
The only problem with this method is that only gold sulfates can be recovered and the gold particles should only be obtained with the first solution. Friends if this video gets 5000 likes and 1000 comments, both steps will be shown as video. If you like this video, please leave a comment. Thank you, S. Vandaya.